However, donations specifying Jericho Table are most welcome at Angel Fest or online. Also, I have good news. If our insurance company gives final approval, we'll have our first state parking resident move his RV into a space at the back of the church this Wednesday. His name is Richard, he has a job, and he's waiting for a permanent housing spot to open. We have four volunteers who will be interacting with Richard, and we ask that the rest of the congregation just respect his privacy. This has been a long process, and we're very glad it's finally coming to fruition. Thank you. Thank you.
We know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess with one voice the wrong we have done, followed by silent individual confession. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him, and our souls to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to govern by justice and love. May your mercy forgive us. Raise us to acclaim Jesus as ruler of our lives and ruler of all, that we may be the soil of our masters, obeying his commands. Please take a moment to sign up for session. Thank you. 
suicide bottle for three hours before doing anything with it. It says on the bottle, concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take some time and try to concentrate a little bit. I really want to ask you, but this is a church service, not a Sunday school class, so I'll go ahead and tell you my story about a tree. Not too long ago, I walked past my childhood home in Southern California. The huge old pepper tree I remember playing under isn't as huge as my memory. Nor does the tree look as old as it did when I was a young child. I've grown old, but that same pepper tree still stands and adorns a new home. We won't know its age until it's cut down and the rings in the trunk might be counted. I'm not telling you how old I am, but I'm old. And you won't tell by my rings. Trees, they give us so much. They give our earth so much. They remove pollution. Do you know that office workers will report significantly less stress if they have a view of a tree? I have a view of a tree, right? Two trees right here. Trees provide vital wildlife habitat. Trees increase our property values. In Portland, Portland, Oregon, a house will sell for $7,000 more on average in almost two days quicker if it has trees. And get this, in Fulton County, Atlanta, Georgia, mature trees positively influenced home sale prices. Homes sold for, you will hear me correctly, uh, over $100,000 more if they were mature trees. That's a lot. <laughs> that the Bible speaks of many different kinds of trees. And there's a few stories, and we all know these stories, but I'm going to remind us of them today, of trees that are used in, in our stories. But first, before I go there, I want us to read Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the person who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on God's law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. This psalm of wisdom emphasizes the importance of aligning our lives with God's word seeking God's wisdom and choosing the path that leads to true happiness. To walk with God gives us true happiness. It's a timeless message that resonates with all believers throughout all generations. So I want us to put on some glasses today, the glasses of an arborist, and we're going to look at a few trees. We're going to view them together. If we are standing way high up and looking down upon a tree, we might see two people hiding behind the tree. We remember the story in Genesis 3.8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. It's just the third chapter of scripture. And we're hearing that Adam and Eve were hiding from God. Now, they were hiding for a reason. They were not just playing a game, and they were not just waiting to hear if God was going to say, Ali, Ali, oxen, free, free, free. No. They had disobeyed God's command, and now they were ashamed, and they were turning away from God. They were running away from God. Many of us, too, may hide from God because we're ashamed. We may hide from God. We may decide not to go to church because we're afraid of, of what people will think about us. We may stay away just because we are ashamed. Now, if we are still standing up high and looking down on a tree, 
we might see somebody hiding behind a tree. Who knows who that somebody might be? Elijah. 1 Kings 19.4 tells us that Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And Elijah requested for himself that he might die. He said, it's enough now, O oh Lord, take my life, for I'm not better than my father's. In other words, he's saying, I should just be dead like they are. Depression and feelings of failure caused Elijah to give up. He was a great, great man of God. He had done an amazing display of God's power. And then he got a note from Jezebel who said, I'm going to kill you. And it scared him. He was tired, very tired. Elijah's victory turned to despair at Jezebel's threat. The joy of God's success that Elijah had experienced had become the valley of fear, the valley of depression. Elijah had ministered until he was tired and worn out. Have you been there? I was reading, and I believe the number is 988. Not 911, but 988. If you ever find yourself thinking about suicide. Because that's where Elijah was, and they didn't have phones back then for him to use. But God was there. We may not feel God's presence with us. Perhaps we just want to throw our hands up in the air and say, I quit. I give up. But rather than give up, we should remember that God is always with us. I had to remind myself of that this week. God was with me through some tough stuff. God sent help to Elijah, and God will send help to us too when we need help. We can even help each other. God may be calling us for our hands to be the hands of God. Now, an arborist's eye has an entirely different view when looking from the bottom up. When you look up, you see the branches. In Luke 19, 1 through 6, we read about a little man. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was. And Zacchaeus could not see because there were so many people around. And he was so short of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus, for Jesus was to pass by that way. And when Jesus came to the place, Jesus looked up, saw Zacchaeus, and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And Zacchaeus made haste and came down and received Jesus. And Jesus received Zacchaeus joyfully. In this story, we see a man so short that he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see the man he had been hearing about. He wanted to see he who had been called the Messiah. Zacchaeus wanted to meet Jesus so much that he was willing to climb a tree to see him. Now, how many of you know what a sycamore tree looks like? Okay, we've got some hands there. I didn't. I looked it up because I was curious. The sycamore tree grows to well over a hundred feet tall, maybe quite a bit taller. The trunk is often divided near the ground, so you have several trunks going up. And the bark is rough. The bark peels off. It's brittle, and there's very few branches low on the sycamore tree. In other words, a sycamore tree is really hard to climb. The spreading limbs at the top make an irregular open head. The sycamore tree is not an easy tree to climb, yet if it is climbed, the view is excellent. Are we willing to give effort to seeing God? Are we willing to work, to think ahead, to make plans, to get to know God? 
Are the scriptures too hard to understand? But we don't read them. Some of us think that way. Zacchaeus sought Jesus, and Jesus went to the home of Zacchaeus, and he spent time with Zacchaeus. Jesus will come to us too, if we will just ask Jesus to come. Jesus will draw close to us. Another